Hey, what's up guys? This is Mr. Jensen with EdTech Integration. In today's video, we're gonna talk about Canvas discussion boards. Now, Canvas discussion boards can be a really powerful tool, whether you're in class right now or online. In this video, I'm gonna talk about specific types of discussion boards that I've created in my class and I've used in my class. And then also I'm gonna go into how to create those discussion boards specifically. So let's check it out. Okay, so if I'm in my Canvas course here, so this is my home page. If I scroll over here to discussions, what you'll see here first and foremost is we've done quite a few discussions. Now, I we are in school right now, so we're in person. Now, this might be a little bit different for you if you're teaching online, but the principles are all the same, okay? So the way we do discussions in our course is after every single module, at the end of every single module before we take a test, we do a discussion board that hopefully ties everything together. Now, my, my goal with each discussion board is to make this a level three or a level four DOK. So students are really diving into creating arguments and, and, and defending things and using evidence and data and stuff like that. Okay. So I'm going to go through the three types of discussion boards that I've used so far in my class. The first type of discussion board was, it was day one, I think it was. So this was just a welcome discussion board. Pretty basic. I set it up with instructions, question, and then one thing I've found with discussion boards is if you give students really specific instructions with sentence stems, so for example, in this case, I told them to respond to two posts, okay, and I gave them sentence stems, the sentence stems really allow them to go deeper, because what you'll find a lot of times is students say things like cool, or that's awesome, dude, or things like that. Providing them sentence stems and allowing them to use those sentence stems allows for more rich conversation I've found in discussion boards, okay? So this is the first type of discussion board, pretty basic, okay? So they would come down here, they would reply, and then they would reply to two other people. The second type of discussion board I've used is this guy. Now, in this one, we were doing a project. This was at the end of a project, and they were already broken up into two groups. So they were in groups of two or three, and I have them do a discussion board with their teammates, okay? So as you can see, there's a ton of groups here because each one of these only had two or three people in it. So if we come down here, um, I posted the standards here. So the scenario here was the Goldilocks and the three bears, and we had just done a project on heat transfer. They were trying to predict why one of the bowls was too hot, one was too cold, and one was just right. So they were just doing their discussion boards with their groups. So as you see here, there's only two people in that one. And if I come back here, looks like there's three people in this one. So I broke these up just depending on their groups that they were in already for their projects. The third type of way I've, I've used this is I've used it through all of my classes. Now there's an option, and I'll show you here in a little bit when you set this up in discussion boards to have it so that they can communicate with everyone in all of your courses or just in their section. So like period one, period two, okay? So this one, I had them communicate. I put them in random groups um, from different classes. So period one, kids could have been paired up with period four and five could have been paired up with period seven, just depended, okay? In this one here, I had them look at a data table and they were just responding to that. So let's look how we set up these guys. So if we're in this page here, so we're discussions, we're gonna add a new discussion. And this looks very similar to um, just a normal page. So I'm just gonna call this a test discussion, okay? So within this, you can add things like links and videos and tables or text, obviously, things from Google Drive, you can add math formulas. There's a lot of things you can do. You also, also have access to the HTML editor here, okay? So if you utilize the HTML editor, you can also use that. Now here's what comes down to the different options. So you can post this to specific sections. So for example, I could just assign this to period one and let's say period three for whatever reason. Um, you can also attach files, which is nice. Now here's where the options become cool. You can set it so students can just reply and that's it. Okay, so the, re the reply to the original post, and then that's it. There's no replied um, to other students. If you don't want that to be, you can set it like that. If you want threaded replies, you would have clicked that off, obviously. So this allows multiple different levels of reply. So I can reply to a student that that student can reply to me, and I can reply back. Okay, so this allows infinite amount of replies to different threads. 
this one's really powerful. I, I like this one. I turn this one on and off different depending on um, the situation. Users must post before seeing replies. This is kind of nice because it allows students to reflect on the content or their um, thoughts before they see other people's thoughts. Okay, so if that's something you want to you want to see what they know beforehand, kind of as an assessment tool, um, this forces them to post or reply before um, they can see other people's. Enable a podcast feed. So if you're going to um, allow students to reply with video or podcast or audio, um, this is that feature here. Okay. So include student replies and podcast feed. Okay. So you can allow students to reply to the podcast feed. Now, this is a really fun one. You can allow kids to take videos of themselves or take audio of themselves, and you can have a podcast type of um, discussion board, which is kind of fun. Okay. Um, graded. So this is an option here. You can also turn it on um, for grading. Allow liking, okay? So you can allow students to like each other's comments. Now this is kind of cool too, because you can allow students, if, if something's interesting or they found a point to be good, they can like it. Um, you can also sort by likes as well. So the one that has the highest likes would go to the top, okay? You can also add this to this to-do list, okay? And you would add the date here as well. Okay, so here's where I find this to be the most powerful feature here. Um, if you want this to be a group discussion, now sometimes whole class discussions are not as powerful because, I'm going to go out of this real quick, um, because there's so many replies and sometimes it gets lost. So if you have bigger classes or bigger sections, um, those things can get lost in there. So if you want to make this a group discussion, you can, you can choose from groups that you've already created under the people tab. Or if you just want to create a group right here, you would say create new group category. And I'll just say um, group discussion. Okay. So there's one of two ways you can do this. You can allow students to sign up for the group. So um, you can set the group so that there's four members per group and the first four members to sign up for each group are in there. Okay. So if we allow self sign up, you can say, um, I'm going to create, uh, let's say, for example, I had a class of 30. I'm going to create 10 groups. I'm going to limit these groups to three people total. Okay, so once once there's three, member, three members in that group, the group will be full. Okay, um, let's say, for example, that I wanted to just create groups and just do it randomly. Okay, so I can either split students into, again, 10 groups. Now, I can split students into groups of, so I can do that, or, so if I wanted to split students into 10 groups, it would take my 30 students and it would divide them evenly into to 10 groups. Or, let's say, for example, I wanted, I didn't care, I cared less about how many groups there were, and I cared more about how many students were in each group. So let's say, for example, I only wanted two in each group. Okay. As soon as I push save here, what that's going to do is it's going gonna, it's gonna to make groups of two. Okay, so in this case, if I had 30 students, it's going to make 15 groups. If I had 50 students, it would make 25 groups. Or you can make groups of five or whatever it may be. So let's say this is a case and I want, to, I want to have groups of three. This is a small detail but an important piece. If you If you want students to be in the same class, you have to click this button. So require group members to be in the same section. If you don't click this, they'll have access to all of your students in all of your classes. Okay, so in this case... Um, all, all period one students are in the same group, all period two students are in the same group, so on and so forth. So I have three, three options down here. I can split students into X amount of groups. I can define how many group or how many people are in each group, or I can create these guys later. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to say that I want groups of three. You can also set, uh, elect a group leader. Okay. And the way you can do that is you can say the first student that joins a group is a group leader, or you can just set it as random. So if we push save here, that will create the groups. And then you can say available from and until. And now, once you push save, as you can see, it's broken my groups up. So now students would come down here. They would say reply to my prompt. Once they say reply... would press save and then at this point they can start replying to each other great comment or whatever it may be
<laughs> so in future videos, I'll talk about the speed grading part of this, but this is just how to set up simple groups, the different kinds of groups, um, what you can do with groups. Again, a really powerful feature to get kids engaged with each other. If you like this content, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions for me specifically or things that you want me to do in the future, please leave those comments in the comments section. Thank you very much.